All right, now get down and lay down. Yay, yay, you know, death row records. Get down or lay down because if you don't want to get down with what we're doing over here, cuz, then you know what I mean? You're going to have to lay down. And that's police culture. Roughly two years ago, George Floyd was a victim of police brutality, tragically losing his life during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, at a time where many Americans were at home and they were able to sit and watch this happen. They didn't have to go to work that next morning. They didn't have to run errands that morning. They were able to sit with their thoughts. They were able to sit with this George Floyd travesty, watch it, think on it, and go, oh, my God. It's time for change. And Derek Chauvin has been has been sentenced. He's doing 22 years, and now the other officers who were involved are standing trial. And I listened to an interesting um, a podcast, news podcast. Shout out to uh, my guy Josh Holty for sending that over to me. Even though he doesn't answer my calls on the pod, but shout out to Josh for sending me that because it gave me a very interesting, you know, perspective because I probably wouldn't have even talked about this as a topic, but he, he sent it to him and I go, you know what? That's a topic. So, well, I want to talk about J. Alexander Kwong. If I say his last name wrong, Kung Kwong, whatever, I, we're going to call him Alex, okay? He was one of the police officers along with Derek Chauvin. He was physically on top of George Floyd. He's half Nigerian, half white, and he was raised by his white mom in a colorblind household. So again, when I tell you skin color and culture aren't the same thing, this is a prime example of it. Because if you look at him, he, he I mean, he's light skinned, obviously because he's mixed, but he, he appears to be black. But culturally, he was raised a little bit differently from your typical black American household, right? He was raised in a colorblind household by somebody of a different color. And unfortunately, let, let's talk about that. Hey, look, man. If you are white and you're going to raise a black kid, don't raise them in a colorblind household, right? Because the world's not colorblind. You're not colorblind. There are very few people in this world who are actually colorblind. And so don't raise your kid in this in this fake society, right? Don't raise them in this utopia that, oh, everybody is treated the same based on their, their merits. No, this is not a meritocracy. This is not the world that we live in. And guess what? This, this kid, this grown man is black. He needs to know that he's black. He needs to understand coming from the house that he lives in that he will be treated differently in certain environments because he's black. Now, you can teach him how wrong it is because it's wrong. And my mama taught me the same thing that, hey, you're going to be treated differently by certain people. And it's not right. And I'm not telling you to accept it, but I'm telling you it, exi it exists so that you're aware of it. So when it happens, you're not shocked. You're not like, oh, my God, I can't believe they called me a nigger. No, I know that exists. I know it's a reality, especially where I grew up at. Because here's what happens when you are when you are this I when you are this 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 white savior who's trying to help out, but you're teach but you're raising this this black kid in this in this in this, in this utopia that you want the world to be that you live in that you can afford to live in because you have white privilege, uh, but but your kid can't live in. You do that. You do that human being a disservice because they grow up to be a delusional adult. Now, I'm not accusing this happening in this situation with Alex, the, the cop from Minneapolis, but I'm just using it as a bigger picture that if you're going to raise black kids, you got to understand that they are black kids. They need to understand that they are black kids and not that they're, they're biracial. Okay, yeah, you can be biracial. You can be biracial because guess what? Me and my girlfriend, we're not the same race. And when we have kids together, they're going to be biracial. They're going to be Afro-Latino, not like Afro-Latino like a Dominican. They're going to be like half black, half, half Salvadorian. But guess what? In the eyes of most people, they're going to be niggas. And guess what their daddy going to teach them? How to move, shake, and function 
like a nigga in a, an environment that you're not wanted in. Why? Because that's life in America. I'm not going to paint this picture of, oh, yes, your mother and I accept each other for who we are despite our cultural and racial differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we did that. But that's not everybody. And if we're going to be honest, that's not going to be everybody in your family. Now, most of the family members are going to be like that. They're not going to give a damn. But you're going to have some who are going to look at you differently because you ain't all the way either or. You know what I'm saying? You ain't all the way black. You ain't all the way Salvadorian. So they're going to look at you differently. Some of your cousins might look at you differently. That's reality. And you need to know that. I'm not going to be like, you know, it's colorblind. Everybody's as open-minded as I am. Everyone's as open-minded as your mom is, your grandmother, your grandfather, your other grandmother, your other grandfather. No, that's not reality. We can't, we can't live like that, no.